Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in this channel. My name is Abraham Gill and I'm super happy to be here and to share with you all of the techniques, tips and tricks about the 3D world that we're going to be sharing. Now, we've got a lot of things prepared. I'm working on a lot of things. You guys have no idea how many things I've been doing the last couple of days. So I'm preparing a lot of stuff for you. If you want to follow and be like be at the top of this, make sure to go down here into our description so that you find all of the links to the socials. But we're not going to talk about the socials right now. We're going to talk about this. Today, Today, I will be showing you how to use a very cool trick inside of Maya to do this column in five minutes. So let's go to it. Now, uh, I, I found this column to be a really nice exercise because, as uh, you guys can imagine, we're building new things. So what better way to build new things that would start with very strong foundations with these columns? I'm going to start a new scene. I actually didn't save that one, which was a mistake because now I'm going to be able to recover it, but that's fine. We'll do it again. So first things first, we're going to go to view image plane and I'm going to import an image that I got from the internet from this Doric column. I'm going to hit open. There we go. Now we're just going to push it up here and scale it a little bit more so that we get a nice size right here for our screen. And we're going to be using curves. A lot of you might think that it's easy to just start with a cylinder and do a lot of extrusions and offsets and extrudes and offsets, but uh, I think uh, curves are going to be a lot easier. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go to create curve tools and we're going to go EP curve. We're going to start on the center here and then we're going to go out and create or capture the profile of this element. It doesn't need to be perfect because we can still edit this after we're done, but we're just gonna be capturing as much as possible from this profile. As you can see, that profile right there looks a little bit weird. Don't worry, and we're gonna stop right there. Once you hit enter, as you can see right here, let me bring the alpha gain down. Once we have successfully captured the element, we can go to right click and with control vertex, we can start moving some of these control points around to match the uh, profile of the column a little bit more. So take your time to, to really capture all of these elements right here. I'm of course speed running this thing because I wanna show you the, the cool things. But if you're doing this for the first time, don't worry, take your time and make sure that this is as nice as possible. There we go, especially for instance here, you can see how we get a, like a really wonky thing. So let's just move a couple of these vertex around so that we get a, a nicer control. There we go. Once you're happy with this, here's where the secret comes into play. You're gonna select the curve. Oh, one more thing, let's just flatten this guys. There we go. You're gonna select the curve and you're gonna go to surfaces, revolve. And on the revolve options, you're gonna select the following elements, okay? So you go to the curves, you go to, sorry, you go to revolve options and you're gonna select, by default, the settings like this. So you're gonna select first, output geometry, polygons. Over here, type, quads. Tessellation method, general. And you're gonna change the U type and the V type to per span and per span. By doing this, we're telling the whole revolve options that we're gonna be generating polygons at a specific interval. Right now it's eight segments and we're gonna have three divisions per segment, which means it's gonna be a 24 sided cylinder. And this 24 sided cylinder will have three divisions in between each point. So every point that you saw here, there's gonna be three divisions in there as well. So now just hit apply and there you go. As you can see, we get this very nice mesh right here. Of course, this one is inverted, so no problem. We just select this, mesh display, and reverse. And look at how beautiful this thing looks. Now, if we want to clean it up or make it a lot better, now's where we can go into our modeling tools to make it even, even nicer. So for instance, right here, I'm going to grab one of these edges. I'm going to push it in. And I'm going to grab that edge and this lower edge, and we are going to bevel. So we bevel those to get a, an even like nicer rounded result right there. If I wanna make this line a little bit like more intense, we can grab this one for instance, scale it in a little bit more, grab this one, scale it in a little bit more. And that's also gonna make the whole thing look way, way closer to what we have. Over here, for instance, I think I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna push it out. And then we could even delete all of these lines right here. And that's gonna give us a flat surface right there. Finally, we just grab those two edges for instance, we bevel them two segments and a small fraction, as you guys know I like, and there we go. Now, to get the, the full length of the column, we're just going to grab the whole thing. I'm going to press Shift, right-click, and we're going to mirror this, and we're going to mirror this on bounding box Y negative and hit Apply. By doing that, we're going to get, uh, or by doing that, we're going to get this. Now, it's just a matter of grabbing all of the vertices from one side and making the column as tall as we want, so something like this. Ooh. Make sure you grab everything there. There we go. Finally, to get the little like uh, lines that we have, I'm gonna go to the vertex or to this edge right here. I'm gonna delete some of them. So one, two, and three on both sides. Control Supreme, remember to delete always. And in this side, I'm just gonna grab all of these faces. 
control e to extrude we're gonna offset a little bit but we keep faces together off actually the offset should be really really small so 0.1 is more than enough once we have that we're gonna do another extrusion actually let me do the offset a little bit smaller control e and we're gonna push this in and give it a little bit of offset as well just a little bit there we go Finally, we're gonna grab our cut tool and we're just gonna insert an edge loop up there and down here. And by doing that, when we press number three, our column is gonna be ready. Now, if you feel like the distance here is a little bit too much, no worries. We can just grab all of those lines right here, delete them, and then grab all of the vertices and bring them down. Like depending on how we want to adjust the column, I think that's a, that's a little bit better. And there you go, a very nice Roman or Greek uh, column in less than five minutes. So. What do you think, guys? I am, of course, going to be doing some renders and stuff. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing now. We are going to have live streams, but the live streams are going to be in Twitch. So if you want to follow us and see the, the streams, make sure to go down here and subscribe to our Twitch channel. As for videos here on YouTube, we're going to have shorts with cool tips and tricks. And we're also going to be having this sort of like videos. I might have uh, like longer videos every now and then. But for this one, since it's the first video, I wanted to do it uh, quick and fast so that you guys can get a, a feeling of what we're going to be doing here on the channel. And uh, well, that's it my friends i would love 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 to hear back from you especially in the comments down here so if you want to leave a comment like if you want to share the content please feel free to do it every single thing you do will help me and the channel grow a lot so thank you very much my friends i will see you back on the next one Bye bye